In this video, I am going to show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz EQS AMG line premium model. This video is also perfect if you have just bought the new EQS. Congratulations, you have picked up a great car. Or if you are thinking about buying one, check out the link below where you can use my summary sheet of what features and options the EQS has. A big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz Wolverhampton for helping me make this video possible. For any information in regards to stock, feel free to select the link below. So to start the video, I'm going to show you how to use the electric cap. So I'll unlock the car, then you can open up the electric cap and you can see the sockets here. And you've got some safety information here. Now, some of you who are more familiar with Mercedes, you used to find the tire pressures in the fuel petrol cap. But now you'll find it on the inside of the front driver's door. When you lock the car, you will not be able to open up the electric fuel cap. I need to mention that on the EQS, you will not have access to the front bonnet because of the HEPA filter. Mercedes-Benz recommend only technicians access this area. Therefore, on the EQS, you can top up your washer fluid on the side of your car. I've never seen this before on any production car. All you need to do is get your Mercedes-Benz key, unlock the car, and then you just push here. Now you just top up your fluid here. And when you're finished, you just close it just like that. To open the boot, all you do is press this switch here and then the boot will open up electronically. This then reveals the massive load capacity of 610 liters. Now to close the boot, you can press this switch. And if you press this switch, this closes the boot and also locks the car. Another way to close the boot is by using your leg and all you do is wave your leg under the bumper and then the boot actually closes. This is a very useful function when both your hands are holding something such as carrier bags or a box. Now if you push the Mercedes-Benz logo that can also open the boot. Now there's a really useful feature which allows you to set the height of the tailgate and as you can see it's quite high and if you were to park this inside a garage with a low roof, it would probably catch. To set the height, all you do is press that button and then stop it to the height that you would like. Then press the stop button and hold it for a few seconds. And when you hear the beep, that's to say that it's now saved that height. And then next time you open the boot, it will now open up to the height that you saved. If you want to set it back to the original height, all you do is push it to the height that you desire and then press the stop button and hold it and it will go back to the original height. Now moving back to the inside of the boot, I'm going to just show you the carry hooks here on either side. Here is the wall charger and you can actually put it underneath the boot tray, which I'll show you in a moment. You've also got the tether hooks on the side. Here, underneath the boot tray, I can just open it up. This holds all sorts of goodies, such as the locking wheel nut. You've got the book pack with a complimentary USB-C adapter. There's also a case for your charger cable. This is the first aid box. This is a warning message. If you were to have a breakdown, which is quite useful. This is the normal three pin charger cable. This is just a useful case to store the cable in. And now I'm just showing the tire repair puncture kit and that's the air pump. I would strongly recommend not using the repair puncture kit and I would actually use the Mercedes-Benz breakdown service. I'll talk a bit about that later in the video. Also, you have other tether points just here on the back of the seats, which are very useful. Now I'm just going to show you how to use the parcel shelf and how to remove it. Now that the parcel shelf has receded, all you do is push onto the sides where you see the arrows. And I'll show you that right now. It's really easy, quick and simple. And then once you've removed it, just store it somewhere, either in the car or at home. To put it back, all you do is just the opposite 
and it literally just slots in. If you want to put the boot cover back on, again, it's just the opposite. I would put it on for security, just in case you have any belongings in the car. And then to close the boot, I'm just going to wave my leg under the bumper and now the tailgate will close. So another great standard feature is the steering. It's got four and a half degree rear axle steering. And now this really leads on to the optional equipment. The AMG line, you can get a premium and that includes steering 10 degrees rear axle, which I'm showing you now in this video. This allows the car to be really, really maneuverable in urban areas such as car parks. Now I'm going to show you the rear interior of the car and I'll do that by opening up the doors. I do love the rear interior and I'm just going to show off the heated seats here. Front and rear seats are standard. You have your electric windows, got some storage on the door and also behind the seat. You also have your isofix points behind the driver and passenger seat. Very lovely. And now moving to the rear climate control functions of the car. Under the climate controls, you have some USB-C ports. Nice and handy for rear passengers. Very lovely. And I'm just going to show off some Mercedes-Benz illuminated door sills here. And you have the AMG floor mats, which is a nice touch. Now I'm just going to show you how to actually fold down the rear seats. And all you do is pull this handle here and the seats go down. I just wanted to show you how the rear looks when all the seats are down. The rear seats fold down 40, 20, 40, which means that each seat can fold down separately. When all seats are folded, you then have a load capacity of 1,770 litres, which is a huge amount of space. Now I'm just showing a 40, 20 split. And now I'm showing a 40, 20, 40 split of the seats down. Now you can see the middle seat is down, which is useful for storing your skis. When the seat is back up, you've got a useful armrest here, which uh, you can also open up here. And this is very useful. You can actually store your mobile phone on this. I really do love this feature. Now I'm going to show you something else that this armrest can do. I have to take the phone out and then all I need to do is close it, push this twice quickly and that reveals the cup holders. Looks very nice, very lovely. And now I'm just going to show off the front the interior, which just looks absolutely amazing. I really want to see this car in the night because uh, this ambient lighting just looks absolutely epic. Now I'm just going to show you how the child safety locks works on the car. All you need to do is flick this switch up and then that means the char locks are on but I better just leave that back off as this is a car for the showroom. Now I'm just going to show you something that's really cool. As you walk towards the car you'll notice the door handles pop out. As long as the key is in your pocket the door handles will pop out. Don't worry the car will still be locked. The only way to open the actual doors is by using your hand and that will then unlock the car. And you'll notice that by the electric door mirrors opening. And when you open the door, you'll notice that the electric window opens just slightly, just like a sports car. To lock the car, you just press the little square sensor. The mirrors then fall down and the handles disappear. Now, I would recommend disabling the keyless go function on your key when you're at home. Some thieves are able to amplify the signal from your key to gain access and start your car. To disable the signal, all you need to do is double tap the lock button quickly and then the LED light will hold for a moment. Now this key is disabled and the only way to gain access is by pressing any of the buttons on the key. Then the key will work normally. Please ensure when at home, both keys are disabled. I would recommend using both keys. Do not leave one key in a drawer. Otherwise, over time, the battery will need replacing. The key is designed to be used, so I would recommend once a month just swapping keys. Also, another top tip, when your car is in for a major service, ensure you take both keys because the technician will replace the battery for the key. I also wanted to show you if you lock the car and then realize you need to access back into the car, instead of pulling out your key from your pocket or bag, you can press the square sensor on the handle or give the middle of the handle a press 
and then the door handle will pop out again. Now I'm going to start talking about the interior features and the first one I want to actually talk about is inside the door sill. You'll notice you've got your tire pressures here which is very useful and then moving down the sill you'll also notice this the Mercedes-Benz roadside assistant and accident number. You have also got the SOS function in the car which I'll show you later in the video. Now moving away from the sill you'll see here on the seat the lumbar support button and now I'm going to step into the car and sit down in this luxurious interior. Listen out for a sound as I sit inside the car. I really like that. Gives it a really theatrical entrance into the car. Now to start the car all you do is press the brake and push the start stop button here and then everything comes alive in the car. Right now I haven't pressed the brake so the ignition is only on. I'm just waiting for the MBUX system to load up and this will also lead me on to talk about the Mercedes Me connectivity. To use the full features of MBUX I would recommend getting connected when you're at your Mercedes-Benz dealer. Then you can use the full features of the Mercedes Me app which is really really cool and fun to use. I love using the remote retrieval vehicle status which shows mileage, tyre pressure. My favourite is the feature where you can see where the car is parked and you can also set a geofencing area. So if the car ever leaves a certain area you'll be notified by email or text and it, it just gives you peace of mind that you know the car's not being moved by anyone. That shouldn't be driving it. Check out the link below for more information on Mercedes Me. Now I'm going to talk about how to control the main seat functions. And you've got your lumbar support just here, as I showed earlier. To adjust the steering wheel, you have a little stalk just here. And you can control the depth and the length of the steering. Also the height. Now moving to the door, you have these buttons here, which don't move. They just work by the touch of your finger. And you just move the seat accordingly. There is a different way to actually set your steering and seats. And what you need to do is go into MBUX on the infotainment screen, press the home button, select comfort. And now when you select this position seat automatically, you just set your height and then the car will actually adjust the seats and steering to the position that is recommended for your height, which is really, really cool. After you've set the height, just select start positioning. If you're not happy with this, you can always reset this at any point by pressing the reset button. Now I'm just going to show you the heating settings option on the MBOX system. For this to work, all you need to do is make sure the heated seats is on, that you want to actually adjust where the heat sends out on the seat. So I've switched it on now, and then when I look back on the MBOX screen, I've got an option here, and now I can select where which parts of the seat I want heating. If the passenger's heated seats is on, I can also adjust their seat heating. Now I'll just switch off the heated seats and I'm going to show you how to actually save the memory seat position. All you do is press the M button and then select the number that you want to save. Then the beep is to alert you that that position has now saved your seats and steering wheel. All you need to do next time if you want to go back into that position is just hold the one button. The button I just selected now has an L. This means now I can control the passenger seat, I can control the seating position, and I can even control the heated seats. I can even, if I want to, control which position is saved for the electric memory seats. I think this is a really nice touch. Yeah, sometimes you can have a passenger that maybe isn't tax savvy, so you could just do the controls for them. Or if you have someone behind the passenger seat, again, you can push the seat for them. Or the passengers can just do it themselves. These buttons look straight out of the S-Class, which is a lovely touch. And now I'm just gonna show you how to lock and unlock the car. If you press that button, that then locks the car. If you just heard a sound, that was just the door handles receding back into the car. They normally disappear as well when you've driven about 15 miles per hour. Here you have the electric windows and that button there I just pressed is for the rear passengers so that they can't open the windows, which is useful when you have kids. 
Now I've just started the car, that's where you're hearing this humming sound. It's going to show you how to use the electric mirrors. What you do is select the button, which side you want to actually control the mirror. Now just press the diagonal buttons and the arrows show you which way the mirror will move. You can do the same for the left side, as you would expect. There is an option for your eyes to actually adjust the mirrors, but uh, on this car it's not been optioned. You can also press this button and this will close the electric mirrors, which is useful when you're trying to go through tight gaps. To open the mirrors, all you do is press that button again and then the electric windows will open up. For the light to disappear, all you need to do is carry on driving and then it will know that you no longer want to use that function. Moving down and you'll see this button here. This is to open the electric tailgate. When you pull the button, the electric tailgate will open up. And then when you look at the instrument cluster, you'll also get a message to say the boot is open. Now you don't need to go back outside and close the boot. All you can do is push this button and then the electric tailgate will close. The message then on the instrument cluster disappears. Now I just wanted to move under the steering wheel. You also have these buttons here and this is just for your lights. I would always leave them in automatic and then the car will know when to put the lights on in the dark. Now I'm just going to move back to the steering wheel and behind the steering wheel the stalks. I've just noticed I push the stalk forward and a little A symbol has come up. This just means the high beam will automatically come on. If I pull the stalk towards me then I can also flash the high beam if I need to. If I move the stalk away from me that then switches the automatic high beam off. Now I just wanted to show you the automatic wipers. You might just notice a couple of dots. If you twist the stalk you can then control if you want it to be on the dots. The dots are just automatic wipers and the line itself are just manual wipers. This stalk also does the indicators left and right. And then on the side of the stalk, you can actually use the windscreen washer and wiper, which will then give you a nice clean windscreen. Now I'm going to show you what the right stalk does. And this is to help you drive the actual car. Push all the way down to put it into drive. Uh, don't touch it slightly. Make sure you actually push all the way up or down and that will put the car into either reverse or drive. And then push the button on the end of the stalk to put the car into park. Now I'm going to show you how to use the electric handbrake, which is just under the steering wheel. All you do is push that button and that will engage the handbrake. Pull it to release the handbrake. On the infotainment screen, you'll see the P sign. That's to say the handbrake is on and then pull to release the handbrake and the light goes away. If the handbrake light is on, you can actually just select drive by pulling the stalk down and that will then release the handbrake. When you put the car into park and then switch off the car, the electric handbrake comes on and you can see that by looking at the P sign in red. Just remember, before you always leave the car, make sure the car is in park and that the handbrake is on. Next, I'm going to show you how to engage reverse and you'll also see the reverse camera. I love this feature. You've got the bird's eye view and you've got the reverse camera at the same time, which is lovely. And when you're using the reverse camera, look out for the red line. That means that's the end of the car. So if you go past that red line, the bumper for your car will be hit. This yellow line that I'm just pointing at, that's very useful. This is just a suggestion by Mercedes-Benz to allow enough parking space, which allows access for pedestrians and yourself. The car can park itself as well, so let me know if you want to see a video in the comments showing the self-parking feature. I couldn't show you today because the car's parked inside the showroom. Now I'm going to show you all the different buttons, which again could help in a parking situation, such as showing curbs. So I just selected the front camera, and then this camera allows you to actually see an augmented reality version of your car and the surroundings, which is really, really cool. You can actually pinch and zoom if you want to. When you select this button, you'll then be able to see this corner of the car straight away, which is very useful. To get the bird's eye view again, you just select this button, which then displays on the screen fully. And then when I press this button, 
it's just gone away. I'll just press it again and then it will switch off the parking sensors. But on this occasion, I'll leave them back on. This button on the end is a very useful function. It says GPS position saved. In the future, the camera will be auto activated here. This just means whenever you come to this location, the cameras will automatically come on to save you time and effort to do it yourself. I think that's quite a cool feature. When you select this button, the camera will go back to the original setting. Also, you might have noticed there's a sound, a little beep. That's just to state that the car is in reverse for yourself and for other people outside. When I put the car back in park, the sound goes away. Now moving back to the steering wheel, you'll see you've got these shifters. Now the car doesn't have a gearbox, but you can actually use these to change the regen recuperation of the car. So when I put the car into drive, you'll see a little symbol saying normal recuperation. But when I press the plus paddle shift, it then shows no recuperation on the instrument cluster. If I then press the minus paddle shift, it goes back to normal recuperation. Then if I press it again, I now have increased recuperation. There are three levels of recuperation that you can have on this car. No recuperation means that the car will just act like a regular car when you let go of the accelerator. Under normal recuperation, when you let go of the accelerator, the car then will use the brakes to slowly decrease the speed of the car and the energy created will charge the electric battery. Increased recuperation takes this further, but the car will never come to a stop. If the car had driving assistance package, then I believe you can have automatic recuperation where the car will actually come to a stop when you have set the cruise control. Now moving back to the steering wheel, I'm gonna show how to actually use the buttons on the steering wheel. The left side of buttons control the actual infotainment screen on the left. And you can see this when I press the home button and I press the back button, and then I can actually control different elements of the screen using the arrows. Moving down the steering wheel, you've got your volume controls here where I can adjust the volume. And if I push it in, I can also mute the volume. I can answer the phone using the buttons there. And then the start button is very useful to store all your favorite uh, options on the infotainment screen. So you can quickly access them. You've also got a switch here where you can use the MBUX system instead of saying, hey, Mercedes. To cancel it, you can just press the same button again or just press the back button. Now moving to the right side of the steering wheel, you've got the buttons here which control the actual instrument cluster. Again, you have your arrow buttons, you've got your home button, and here you can select different themes for the instrument cluster. Currently it's in normal. And then if I press up, you can see you've got different things that you can see for the car, such as how much range, or if you listen to a radio, you can change radio stations using this screen. You can also reset your trip mileage. So I usually do that when I've uh, fueled up my car. I set it back to zero to see how many miles I've done with my last fuel tank. How I prefer in this car is to display my actual sat nav in classic. Now moving down the steering wheel, you've got all these buttons here. The first one I'm going to show you is the is the button to show how much distance to keep for other cars and you can increase that if you want to or decrease it using the same button. And the button underneath is the speed limiter and this is where as you're driving you can control the speed. Let me know in the comments if you actually want me to show you how to use this while you're on the road, as today I can't show you, but if there's enough demand, then I'd be happy to record this. And if you need to cancel the cruise control or the speed limiter, you just press the cancel button. The res button stands for resume. If for some reason you disengage the cruise control by stepping on the brake, when you press the res button, it will restart the cruise control at the last speed it was set to. Now, let's show you how to you connect your mobile phone with Bluetooth to the car. To do this, you press the home button, then select phone, then select connect device. Next, I would recommend getting your phone, then go into settings, go to, once you're in Bluetooth and it's switched on, go back to the infotainment screen, select connect to new device. 
and select the device name that you want to connect. So in this case, my phone's name is SP Phone. Then just wait for your phone to state a message that your Mercedes is trying to connect and pair. Here you want to just uh, select allow. This will then allow the infotainment to get all the names from your phone to the car. And then you want to accept and start Apple Car CarPlay. Um, you can decline and just use Bluetooth, but you might as well use the feature if you have it. Now you need to go back to your phone because it's just waiting for you to authorize to use Apple CarPlay and you want to select use CarPlay. And then in a moment, uh, Apple CarPlay will activate and you can use Apple CarPlay uh, just with Bluetooth, which is really, really cool and useful. And another great feature that I love is if you ever leave your phone in the car and you switch off the car and leave, you'll get a prompt to say, don't forget your phone. I wish I had this feature in my 2016 Mercedes-Benz A-Class because I usually forget my phone when using our Apple CarPlay and I wish mine had Bluetooth instead of connecting through a cable to use Apple CarPlay. I need to mention that you can also connect two phones to MBUX which is very useful when you have a personal phone and a business phone. This way you'll never miss a phone call, especially an important one. It's still very easy to access MBUX as well. All you do is press the home button and then you've got access to all the main features of the car still. And if you like, you can actually create tiles and set favorites. So if you prefer Apple CarPlay being closer to the main home screen, uh, you can just adjust accordingly. The system's very intuitive. Reminds me of my uh, phone where you just hold down apps and then move them where you want to see them. Now moving to the temperature controls. It's quite simple. The down and up arrows just means the temperature either will increase or decrease. Down being decrease, up being increase. This is a feature that I love. When you either increase or decrease the temperature, do you notice on the door the ambient lighting is changing? When I increase the temperature, the ambient lighting goes red. And when I decrease the temperature, the ambient lighting goes blue. To increase or decrease how much fan air comes out, you just select these buttons here on the side. The car does have climate control, so I can have a different temperature to the driver's side and the different fan speed. And my passenger can also have a different fan speed and temperature. If I want to sync it up so that it marries up the same as mine, you just press that climate menu and cl click on sync. For the passenger to take control again, all they need to do is select either the fan or the temperature, and then they have their own temperature and fan speed on their side again. You can also distribute the air how you want to by selecting the buttons on the screen. You can just also switch off everything by selecting here. I would recommend though using it and also using the AC at least once a month. The only time you might want to switch off everything is if the battery was very low and you want to conserve energy. Another way to do it is by pressing the eco button to save energy. To get rid of the climate menu, just select climate menu. And again, I've got options here where I can select the fan speed. I would recommend leaving in auto. And the main reason is when I actually use it in auto, I find that my windscreen, all my windows don't mist up. Basically the car just figures it all out for you. The only time I would take control is when it's a very, very cold day. I will then just select the windscreen and automatically it will be set to high and the car will just try and get the car de-iced or de-mist at the same time as quickly as it can. Once it's de-misted, I then put it back in auto. And I always recommend having 22 degrees set as the temperature. This is what Mercedes-Benz recommend as well. I also nearly forgot to mention this car has the HEPA and Broad filter. Basically, this car can give you nice fresh air inside the cabin, even if outside it's very smelly. Check out the link below for further information on the HEPA filter. Next, I'm going to show you how to use the phone controls. All you do is select phone. 
The call list then shows who you've recently called. You might notice the spyglass. That's where you can find the person you want to call. You also have keypad and that's where you can enter a number to call someone. From here, you can also access Apple CarPlay, which is quite handy. And again, you can do the same things, enter a phone number or find the relevant person you want to call. Next, I'm going to show you how to use a sat nav. It's quite easy, to be fair. You can select here where to. Then all you need to do is put in the address. And I always use the postcode to get a more accurate result. So I'm going to use the postcode for the dealership to show you as an example. Then all you need to do is select the address and then select let's go or you can set it as a favorite if you want to which is quite useful you can even share it to other people if you need to you can also check routes or nearest public charges near the vicinity on this occasion i'm just going to show you let's go function to adjust the sat nav volume what you'll need to do is when the actual sat nav is talking then adjust the volume Otherwise, you're only changing the volume of the entertainment, which is either the radio, or whatever music you've got on on the car. Now, if I drop down this section here, I've got an option to mute the sat nav voice. Also, I get extra information such as roads that I'm going to be approaching and details if there is a roundabout, etc. I can also change the map layout. So if I want to see it in a 3D way, or a bird's eye view layout, or even etc. If I select the star, that just gives me all my favorites, which I can customize if I want to. Also, I can go onto my own Mercedes Me profile from this screen. This option allows me to access Apple CarPlay quite quickly. Now the button I'm gonna select allows me to see where the nearest charger is, which is quite cool and very useful if you need a top up for your battery. If I select the spyglass, I can then also change the address of where I want to travel to. The screen also gives me my previous destinations and favorite destinations. Well, you can also scroll down the list to give you further information on what roads you're going to be accessing. To end the route guidance, all you do is select this flag and that now finishes the satnav guidance. If you select the EQ button, this just gives you very good quick information on parking spaces, charging stations and previous destinations. You can see information about your battery such as range, charging information and the consumption information. When you select the cog, that gives you further changes that you can do for the sat nav, including avoiding motorways, tollways. View allows you to change how you actually want the sat nav to display, but I would always leave the augmented reality on. It's a very useful feature. And messages and information, I would, I would actually leave this on so that you your sat nav talks to you and tells you certain information on where you're going. The tile I just selected, that's a very useful option. It allows you quick access to connect to your radio, or if you've got your a USB device connected, or you want to access music on your phone. The cog just gives further settings to give you more customization such as the equalizer and base. Now I'm going to show you the row of buttons at the bottom of the infotainment screen and first is the dynamic select button and here you can change the settings of the driving dynamics of the car. You can change it from eco, comfort, sport and individual. This basically just changes the character of the car and how it drives and feels. So when you change the car into, let's say, comfort, you'll also see C just here. And that's where you know the car is in comfort mode. Now I've just changed it to sport and then individual. You can also customize individual mode and you just use the cog button here. And then you can customize all these different things, such as the drive dynamics, which changes how the accelerator feels giving you a faster response or a slower response. The steering, the suspension, the ESP, the sound, all of this can be customized. Now the next button I'm gonna show you is the camera button. And here the camera is engaged and you can select all the different camera layouts 
I find this really useful. It, let's say in a parking situation and you're in a tight car park, just press that button and then you've got access to all the cameras of the car. I also just wanted to show you this really cool feature. Behind the Mercedes logo is the rear camera. Next, I'm gonna show you the EQ button. And when I press this, you get certain information about the car, such as how much the battery has charged. When you click search, you can search your previous destinations or enter a destination. When you select route, you've got all these different options, such as charging stations near you, the range tab gives you a good idea of how much range you can actually get and energy saving information, which is very useful, especially if you're not used to driving an electric car and you would like to maximize the range. Now moving on, I'll go to the charging tab. Here I can go into advanced settings, which gives me other options such as the pre-entry climate control. This feature is very useful, especially if you know there's going to be a cold day. This feature is very useful as well, which will help reduce your electricity bill. Here you've got some more options on how you want to charge your car, which is cool. And then when you select consumption, you've got other information on how much electricity you're actually using. Then when you select the cog button, which just gives you more settings, this helps avoid motorways or toll roads, and it's all for the sat-nav. Next button I'm going to show you is the vehicle settings option on the car. Here you'll be able to switch off certain things such as the ESP, the parking sensors. A very useful thing is the raise vehicle levels button. Once you press it, the car will either raise or lower, depending on what position it was last in. After you press the button, you'll see the car raises from the rear and then the front. When you press the button again, you'll see again the front will go down first and then the rear. Next, I'm going to show you the how to switch off the parking sensors, which is very useful if your car is getting in a car wash. But normally I would just leave them on. Another useful feature is the interior protection. Just select it to switch it off. Now you can leave passengers in the car and you can lock the car with your keys and the alarm won't go off. Everything else I wouldn't actually touch. But if you wanted to go into all settings, just click on the arrow here and then select all settings. Again, you can customize the car, including switching on the active lane change assist, which is designed for your safety. The next button I'm gonna show you is the hazard lights, which is a very useful to have and in a handy position. Here, I'm just showing how the hazards work on the instrument cluster. Next, I'm gonna show you the fingerprint scanner, and this is really cool. But to use the feature fully, you need to have your Mercedes Me connected the dealer that you bought your car from will be able to do this for you. If for any reason you want to switch off the display, you can by pressing the button and then tapping the screen to wake it back up. And if you click system off, then the whole digital display switches off and you have to actually press the button again. Next, I'll show you a very useful button, which is the mute button. After you've pressed the button, you can then control the volume using the button next to the button I've just pressed, or you can touch the screen if you like, and you can mute from there as well, which is quite cool. Again, when you press the cog, that gives you further settings for the car. A cool button I'm gonna show you is the entertainment button. Here you can customize the actual sound quality and even save profile sounds. You also have access to your equalizer and balance and fader find this really useful when I've got my little one in the back of the car. I usually focus the sound to the front so then my daughter can hear whatever she's listening to on her iPad on the rear of the car. Well on the EQS you can actually use a sound focus button and this is really cool because I would actually use this. Next I'm going to show you how to use the radio. I'll be able to show you how to skip the radio. You can actually skip 
using the buttons at the bottom here or you can actually touch the tiles you could call them on the screen so setting favorites is very easy all you do is select favorites and then click on the plus sign or if you're on the tile area you can actually select on the star just here that has now saved in my favorites now if i select this button i'll be able to get a list of all the radio stations and again where you see the stars i can save favorites here quicker when i go back to the favorites list i can then also delete using these little dots here and select delete entry i can also customize the list so if I want a certain radio station at the top, I can just do so like so. Once I'm happy, just click on the tick. Next, if I press this button, again, I've got my equalizer and I can set my base. If I then select the cog again, here I've got settings for the radio. The main feature you may want to use is the radio announcements, which will give you updates with the traffic or weather. And you can even customize it to other things, which is quite cool. To exit, you just press the back button and you've also got this useful search function. So if you just want to find a certain radio station, just type it in. And if you want to listen to some media from your Bluetooth device, all you do is press the home button, press media. And if you've got a USB with music on it, you can do that or play music from your phone. Also, if you have another device with Bluetooth, you can connect that to MBUX, which is very cool. On other cars, that can be restricted to only listening through Bluetooth to one device. Next, I'm going to show you the roof of the car, where you've got some really cool, useful buttons. And then the first button I'm going to show you is the electric sunroof. All you need to do is swipe and swipe whichever way you want the sunroof to actually open or close as you can see the electric windows opening but you might have just noticed the electric blind moving forward if you want to get rid of that all you do is swipe again and then you'll see the electric blind goes away to close the sunroof all you do is swipe in the opposite way now the sunroof's closed. If I just want to open it just slightly at a tilt, I can by just pressing like so. If I want to close it, then just press the opposite button, just like so. If you want to close the sun blinds, all you need to do is swipe like so. And now the electric blinds will close on both the rear and front sunroofs. When you close the actual blinds, the ambient lighting just shows up a little bit more in the rear because it's a bit darker, which is quite cool. But for this video, I'd rather keep the electric blinds open. So I've got more light and I can show you some more features of the car. If you're enjoying this video, please like it. Next, I'm just going to show you some more buttons of the car. Uh, the, mainly the reading lights, which you press here. Also, if you select the bulbs individually, just like so, you can actually switch them on and off. These little holes here, you might have noticed, they are most likely microphones and not USB-C's ports. Now I'm just showing the rear lights. When you press the button again, the lights will switch off. Next, uh, you've got the Mercedes Me button here. And you've also got the light switch button here. So if the lights are on, you can actually switch it off by pressing the button here. This usually works when the doors are open. A really useful feature with this button is when you press it, it turns red, which means it is now off the lights. So when you open the doors, the lights won't come on. Now, in the event where you may need to, some assistance from somebody, you can actually press this button here. This is a very useful function. If you have a breakdown, you can press this button. If for whatever reason you don't want to do that, you have got the contact number for the breakdown service here on the door sill. Please don't hesitate to use the breakdown service as it's complimentary for three years with the car. After the three years, as long as you get the car serviced by Mercedes-Benz dealer, the breakdown service will just extend every year. And I believe you have this for up to 30 years 
So if you get the car serviced up to 30 years, you will have the breakdown service included, which is really, really useful. Also, I just showed you the SOS button. This button could save your life, so it's really important you use it in an emergency. If, once you've pressed the button, you're actually giving permission to Mercedes-Benz to say, this is where I am, please find me. If the airbags ever went off, then automatically the SOS function will work and it will send the location to the relevant contact center uh, who will assess the call. If you didn't respond to the call handler, then they will send all the emergency services to your location. Now moving down the cockpit area, I'm just going to show the cup holders, the USB-C. You've also got the wireless charging. You can also charge your key from here as well if you want to. You may also ever get a notification on the car to say place key here. And this is where you actually put the key. To use the cup holders, you just push down. And if you want to get rid of the cup holders, you can, which is very useful. To put them back, just do the opposite and it will slot back in. It's pretty straightforward. It's quite cool, quite simple. To get rid of the actual cup holder, to get some more space, you just move the cup holders themselves. To hide any possessions, you can just do so, like so. You've also got the armrest, and within it, you've got extra USB-C ports. Again, you can just hide some more personal possessions, like sunglasses in here. Under the center console, you've got this really useful space with USB-C ports under there. So that's quite handy. Now I'm going to show you the hold function. You would use this when you come to a traffic lights. All you do is slowly stop and then double tap the brake like so. And you'll see on the instrument cluster a hold function. And when you're ready to go, all you'll do is press the accelerator and that will release the hold function and then you can carry on driving as you normally do. Now moving back to the instrument cluster, I'm gonna show you all the different themes. Now I'm just showing the sports screen, which looks quite futuristic, really. Next, I'm gonna move on to the understated screen. This theme is perfect if you're driving, let's say on the motorway, you know, it's late, and you don't want too much information displayed on the infotainment screen, and your uh, digital instrument cluster. I love that you can change the actual color of the understated screen. When you choose a color, you'll notice on the infotainment screen that it also changes and the ambient lighting as well will change. So I'll show this again. I'll select the blue um, lighting and then you'll notice the infotainment screen goes to a blue theme and also the ambient lighting goes blue. That's pretty cool. I'm going to change it back to a purpley kind of color, leave it the way it was, which I kind of prefer because uh, I think that's the, one of the most brightest colors and it really gives theater when you, you know, look at it. It's definitely very exciting when you sat inside the car. Another useful feature is when I select all the way to the right, you'll see the sat nav. This is absolutely perfect. You know, if you're going on a long trip and you need to just quickly glance at the sat nav rather than look all the way down at the infotainment screen. However, I do prefer using the classic screen layout. I can still display my sat nav, but also I get a lot of good information. You might be able to just see the battery and an arrow. The arrow is just telling you where the actual electric fuel cap is. This way you can never forget which side to actually park your car when you need to charge your car. You also have your range. You also get a notification if you're not wearing your seatbelt. As you're driving as well, you'll get speed notifications, which is very useful. Now I'm just going to move on to the assistance screen. This just gives you information on what the radars are picking up, which is uh, quite cool. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this in action out on the road. Now I'm just going to show you the service screen. Here you get information on what service is due and when it's due, which is quite useful. You also get tire pressures and the temperature of the tires. Also on this screen, you'll get any warning messages. One example message could be that the brakes need checking or the washer fluid needs topping up. Let me know in the comments which screen you would prefer having if you have the EQS or you own the EQS. Now going back to the infotainment screen, I'm just gonna show you the apps option 
on the tiles here. Now to use the beginner driver mode and the valet service mode, you will need to be connected to Mercedes Me to use all the main features of this, otherwise it won't load up. Now the next feature I'm going to show you is called the gallery app, and this is really useful. Here the car will record images of where it thinks it's had a collision. All the pictures you're seeing right now are actually on the transporter when the car was delivered, so it must have been moving quite a bit, but obviously nothing's been hit. Now the next feature I'm going to show you is called the seat kinetics. This basically, when you press play, will move the seats every now and again, and this will prevent you from getting less tired, basically. Parts of the seat will just adjust. That way your muscles and your joints are constantly moving and not in a fixed position, which can cause joint and muscle pain. Now moving on to the ambient lighting, you have 64 different colours to choose from. I'm just going to move it back to blue. Having it on monochrome just means that the car will have one light throughout the car. When you change it to multicolour, now the colour won't be fixed. You'll have different colours in different parts of the car interior. This also gives a different kind of experience for the interior lighting, which is quite nice. When you select the brightness tab, you can change the actual brightness of the ambient lighting and you can also change the lighting from the top and the bottom and the middle which is very cool now moving to effects tab here you can set certain things and i'll actually show you what the i stands for and that just gives you more information on what this feature does if it was me i would just leave everything on i love the experience that it gives you but it's also very useful as well the warning when ex exiting feature is very useful. The doors on the ambient lighting will actually change red if, let's say, there was a bike traveling towards the door. And let's say the bike was behind the car. So just to, to reiterate, the doors will flash red. Now moving back to the seat option on the comfort options. I'm just going to show another feature with the heat seating. And you actually have to have the heated seats on. So I'll just put those on right now. Now select the seat heating balance option. And on this screen, you can actually set where you want the heat to come from on the actual seat. So if you want it from the bottom, the back, it's all very, very customizable. Just in case you don't want to put extra heat in any inflamed areas. The next option I've already showed you earlier in the video. And if you want to reset everything to the original settings, just select reset. And then that will actually put everything back to how the car was originally set when brand new. Now going back to settings, I'm just going to show you this feature. Here you can switch off or switch on the safety systems such as the active steering assist. I'll switch on active lane change assist and you'll also get notification on the instrument cluster. I personally wouldn't switch off any safety system. Moving on to the camera tab. This is quite useful, you know, if you need to clean your lens on the rear of the car. Uh, you just select open camera, cover, GPS based activations. Here you can delete or even amend. Next I'm going to show you the parking tab. Here you can customize all the different parking options such as setting warning tones, audio fade out, you've also got time of warning, you've also got maneuvering assistant. Now moving to the vehicle tab, here you can actually change the sound experience. Now listen now when I, I change the settings, all I'll do is select the cog and when I change to vivid flux you can just hear the difference. GPS based raising allows the car to actually raise its body. So this is very useful if you've got a quite a high driveway. Let me know in the comments which sound experience you prefer. 
I would recommend keeping the creep function on. This basically means when the car is in drive or reverse, the car will just move. This would be the same in a automatic car with an engine. The easy entry and exit feature. I would leave this on as this helps you get in and out of the car much easier. The next feature I'm going to show you is quite useful. If you don't like having the sunlight in the car with the sunroof, if you select that button there, that means now the electric sun blind will always stay closed unless open it manually. The belt adjustment I would leave on as that just tightens your belt as you sat down. Here the only thing I would leave off is the acoustic lock. When it is on, after you switch off the car and lock the car, the car will always horn and this can annoy your neighbours so I would definitely, out of courtesy, just leave this off. The vehicle protection tab just gives you extra customization, and you can even manage your photos for collisions here. You can also edit uh, dynamic select, including customization of the individual mode. Again, you don't actually have to mess around with this. You can just leave it in comfort and the car will just be nice and comfortable for you to drive. But this is useful if someone is really into customization and tailoring the car for their driving style. This is perfect. The lights tab allows you to change different things such as the low beam for the digital light system. Here you can change the settings for the interior lights and exterior lights. I've already covered the ambient lighting. Now moving on to system, here you can change the voice assistant if you want to change settings for that. Here you can change the display brightness. Home screen allows you to go to a classic view and this is more familiar in cars like the C-Class. If you're not into change, this might be the best view for you rather than using the zero layer screen. However, I better just change it back to the zero layer screen so that customers can see what this looks like. Graphic goodies, again, that's this is just kind of a, like a gimmick, but I would have this on because I like the idea of seeing something different on special occasions. The language tab allows you to change different languages. Here you can also control the feedback that you get from handwriting. You can also change the keyboard languages if you like to and also reset it back to the original settings. Control elements allows you to change different settings here such as the acoustic feedback, the touch and feel of the display, the touch control. Now moving on to info, you can find the digital owner's manual. You can also check what latest software you're on. The car can update itself, which is pretty cool. When you select phone, you can now make phone calls from this screen. Or if you like, you can actually enter a number manually if you like. You can always use the search function if you like. You can also use Apple CarPlay. The cog just allows you to change devices or connect a new device. This tab just allows you to see what devices are currently set up and you can also remove all devices. If you select media, here you can play whatever music you've got stored on your Bluetooth device. The info option is quite cool. It will show you the actual electricity moving as you're driving. I have to put the car into drive for me to show you this, but because I'm in the showroom, I can't do this. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to drive the car on the roads and to show you this feature. When I select the vehicle tab, it just gives me extra cool information. Again, I need to be in drive to show you how this all works. Now have a listen of the different sound experiences.
let me know in the comments what you think of uh, the sounds or would you prefer just not having any sound experience on now have a listen of the sound experience when i put the car into drive Now, what do you think of the sound experience? Let me know in the comments if you would have it on and then tell me which one or would you have it off? I did nearly forget to show you this. Under settings, you can cl click on this icon and look at different parts of the car, which will show you the different menus that you've got. It's just a different and fun experience rather than, you know, just manually looking at text. Now I'm going to tell you the truth here, I don't see myself ever using this, mainly because I, I would find it quicker for me just to find a, what I need to change myself, rather than searching like this. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but you can also browse the internet in the car. What you need to do is connect your mobile phone hotspot. The car can also connect to Wi-Fi if you want to. Also, I need to mention you can control the passenger seat and if you want to, you can control the seats and you can put the heated seats on if you want to. You can also save the memory function. All you do is press M and press the number that you want to save. And when you hear the beep, that's to say that's that saved the seating position. I needed to show you the rear of the car just how the lights work, which is quite nice. So you have your own reading light, but you also can control the other rear lights in the car. You can also operate the rear heated seats by pressing the button like so. Yeah, you have your extractor fan, also a hook to store your jacket. And you have this on both sides of the car, which is quite nice. Thanks for watching so far. Now this is the end of the video. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe if you want to learn more about this car and others. If you have any suggestions for future videos, then please let me know.